was going to launch our own distribution for Dupe. Come, come see it, SiliconAngle.com, and download it. You can find the link. That's great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much for having me. Appreciate it. Great Thanks. to meet you. Sorry for Thank the you. scheduling uh, snafu. No great to have Thanks. you. Dave, great conversation. Yeah, I love good. the conversation uh, about the database. Is really that the uh, RDMS um, misuse and mis mis uh, use and design is really right on the money. Stefan is super smart about that. Yeah, I really appreciate I, that comment. Good insights. Great insights. Are you Jacob? Yeah. Hey, Jacob, Dave Vellante. Hi. Yeah. Pleasure to meet you. This is my co-host, Jacob. Hey. Welcome good to, to the Cube. Thank you. We're live on day two in New York City for Hadoop World 2011. We are on the ground. This is our flagship telecast, The Cube, where we go out and talk to the smartest people in the room who can find and extract that signal and from the noise and share that with you. We find the top stories. The entire team is here. The bloggers are here and news is here. We're getting all those stories, Dave, and covering the trends, obviously big data in Hadoop, the funding, and we're here to predict the future. So uh, welcome to theCUBE. Jacob Rapp from, uh, from Cisco Systems, uh, manager of technical marketing, right? Yeah, and, uh, right. So welcome, we're gonna Thank talk you. about the, the intersection of networking and, and big data. But uh, there was news the other day, right? Uh, Juniper, didn't Juniper break, bring down the internet or something like BG, that? <laughs> BGP table dump, core dump, and uh, crash <laughs> internet. You've never seen that from Cisco. Um, <laughs> sorry, Juniper. Uh, <laughs> a little tongue in cheek. Yeah, yeah, tongue in cheek. <laughs> no, so Cisco, obviously networking vendor, and this whole monitoring and performance stuff has been around for on the network side for many, many years. Mm. So you know, data is used a lot in networking for yep. a lot of reasons: configuration management, automation. Absolutely. Um, so you're no stranger to it. But why Hadoop now? I mean, log analysis and all that stuff. What are you guys doing with Hadoop? And, and share with us uh, Cisco's view of this. Sure. So um, we at Cisco, I mean, traditionally have been a really large player in the big data with uh, our networking for a while and with traditional big data with the Web 2.0 industries. And what we're seeing now is really a, a influx of enterprise customers coming to us and asking, how do I integrate this into my enterprise system? So moving from the Web 2.0 to the enterprises now, and what do I care about? So how do I architect my network? What's really behind the scenes in Hadoop? So I mean, there's a lot of uh, material out there of, okay, Hadoop's this, Hadoop's the other thing for the network. But what we really wanted to do is run a series of benchmarks. Because before we make any recommendations at Cisco, we want to do a little bit of due diligence beforehand. And we built this 128 node cluster, about a petabyte worth of data. Uh, I think, as Cloudera mentioned on the first day, that the average cluster size is around 120 nodes. So it's a pretty good representation, I think, of what we're seeing uh, out in the enterprise today. Uh, and we ran all these benchmarks to come up with what, what really is happening on the network. What, if you're running different types of jobs, if you're using different types of compute nodes, what's happening? And that's uh, uh, to really provide some sort of, uh, some value into the ecosystem uh, with, with some real data. So how are the network requirements in, in Hadoop and big data different? So there's a lot of, um, so I think a goal out of this was to really demystify it, make it less scary, right? Because it's all about integration into the enterprise. And, uh, how, how we can integrate really well with the current infrastructures. So there's, there is some things in Hadoop, and it's largely dependent on the, on the, uh, uh, the, tr the data models, whether you're running an ETL-like job or a business intelligence job, what, what effects on the network. One, one thing that is crucial is your reliability and redundancy mechanisms. Because if you have a rack go out, if you lose a top of rack switch or wherever you're, you're connecting into, and say you have 16 servers or 32 servers in that rack, each server has eight to 24 terabytes worth of data, that's a lot of data to lose. And then if you lose that rack, HDFS is redundant, so rebalancing will happen. So all of a sudden, all those 16 or 32 servers times eight terabytes or 24 terabytes worth of data, all of a sudden it needs to replicate throughout the network. So this causes a lot of issues. So I think reliability and redundancy are really key pieces in the puzzle. So you're saying there, this is the amount of data that you have to accommodate just yeah makes it all even more important than the traditional enterprise to have higher availability. Yeah, absolutely. Because oh, okay. I think, I mean, HDFS was built with redundancy in mind, yeah. but if you lose something like a network component, yeah, that's, it's, it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a little bit, I mean, you will recover, but it, it's going to be painful. Yeah, it's and been a long, long time. Yeah. yeah. Another, another thing that, that you may, um, that we found out of our, our study, and actually our study's published online now uh, on our website. We did a, a nice comprehensive white paper to, with all the results. Uh, but is buffering. So as you're, depending on the workload, take for example like a ETL workload, extract, transform, load, you're just transforming a lot of data. You start out with say a terabyte worth of data, 10 terabytes worth of data, you end up with 10 terabytes worth of data at the end. So 
with MapReduce, how MapReduce works, in the middle of that, I'm going to shuffle that data across the network. So I'm taking that one, five, ten terabytes, shuffling it across the network. And then at the very end, if I'm replicating it for redundancy at the end, that one, five, or ten turns into two, ten, or twenty terabytes as you're replicating out through the network. So these can be really bursty traffic patterns for the top of rack switches. And uh, so, I mean, optimized buffering is what you really need. I'm not saying buffering has been a pretty big debate in the industry of how much do I need? Is how, uh, do I need a gig, two gigs? Uh, do I need nine megs? Do I need two megs? So, I think we've the position I think we've taken is really optimized buffering. So yeah, that, your recent announcement of, didn't you have a, a, a Nexus 3000 announcement that had some expanded buffering? That's best, right? Yeah. So there's a, a Nexus. There's two platforms actually we just came out with uh, in a recent launch. The the 3040, uh, uh, 3048, which is the uh, the new 3K, mm -hmm. and um, the uh, 2248TP-E. Okay. So whether uh, our customers want a, a, an architecture with a top of rack switch like a 3K, uh, or a fabric extender architecture to really optimize on cost and management, uh, we have either, either platforms now mm -hmm. that are really optimized for big data in mind. You know, we, we talked to a lot of people on the cube and in the industry around big data. We've been covering it for two years, like a blanket, and, and it's fun. Um, but there's always a conversation around, oh, commodity hardware, and that's the story, right? And, you know, but the, with the cloud movement, compute really isn't the problem. And, and the constant thing that we're hearing, I'd love to get your perspective on this, is it's not so much the compute, and there is some storage issues with Hadoop that kind of goes away. The biggest problem everyone's facing is moving the traffic on the network. Right, so this is what this is what you guys do, right? This is this is where it's all about. So the, you know that's a big focus area. So there's tons of compute, yep, absolutely. storage works with with MapReduce and HDFS, but really the the issue is the network. Yeah, absolutely. What are you guys seeing, and how? I mean, obviously it's the first step with Hadoop, and what's the vision and how are you guys tackling that? Obviously making you know that's the bottleneck. Well, I think there's uh, depending on the workload. I've, I've, we actually have had customers that come to us and say, well, I've I've had zero issues on the network. It's, I've deployed it, no problem whatsoever. And then some that have, some that are like, I'm moving a ton of data because I'm doing this type of workload versus another type of workload. Because if you do a business analytics type workload where I start out with a ton of data and try to find some analytics out of it, I may start out with 10 terabytes but end up with a few megs that I have to shuffle. So it, it, it's really dependent on the workload, what, what we're going to see. But a lot of what what we're seeing is that they want this to be integrated into their current IT infrastructure because there's a lot of customers out there that are, there's in proof of concepts, demo labs, uh, the science projects right now where there's a Hadoop cluster out, uh, kind of out of the normal IT infrastructure. So it really the key is integrating that back into the IT infrastructure because they've, they've found tremendous value of it and now they're like, let's, let's integrate this thing and they want to make sure that their, their network is resilient enough for it. So I think the good news is mo in most cases, uh, it's not an issue because the size of the clusters aren't that big right now, except for those spot data jobs where there's you sure. moving around. No, uh, clusters are going to grow. grow. Absolutely. So I mean, we've we've deployed thousands of nodes of clusters out there yeah. uh, on the uh, on the network, and if there's if it's just a solid design principles, right? So a lot of a lot of the design principles have been kind of evolving as we go. So. For example, like the new FEXs that we're coming out with, or the new 3Ks we're coming out with, this optimized buffering, more vis visualization into what's happening. Because if you look at, I mean, it's all providing more more intelligence to the operators, more visibility, where we can go monitor buffering, we can monitor different statistics. And I think it's more important as these, like you said, when clusters grow, and then you get a bunch of different business entities that want to use that cluster all at the same time. What if this business entity is doing something really strange that's affecting the network or that's Multi-tenancy is an issue, so providing the visibility and the configuration and options to actually change um, change the way you're doing buffering or uh, QoS or those types of will become more important as we, as these clusters grow and multiple users are using it. Well, it's great to uh, see you guys here. Uh, Jacob Rapp from Cisco, you guys have a table. We see you guys over there. What's okay. some of the feedback you're hearing at the show? When what's your observation of this community and? Um, the demand and just overall uptake. Honestly, Cisco's a big player. They're not a startup. It's not, yeah. Obviously, you see Hadoop, it's validation from Cisco's standpoint. Yeah. You talked about some of the network concerns you guys are on top of. Um, that being said, what's your view about this whole ecosystem and uh, as it's developing and Hadoop in general? So I, th I think this conference was a, r a really great conference and there's a really good technical core audience here. So I, I mean, some of the, there's, there is some larger conferences out there that are maybe not big data. There's big data themes in it, but 
the quality of people I think at this conference has been really good, and we've had some really good questions and and comments and how how should we do this? How should we architect? The sessions are really so I think, attended. I mean, like, yeah. like the people actually really there to yeah, like they're there, listen and, and, and the comment. questions that they're, they're yeah. asking <laughs> are the the deeper level questions that you are are really happy that they're getting that yeah. feedback from. So I think it was a, a great a great conference to be at. Yeah, I mean, some conferences you go to, it's just like, oh man, it's like a payola situation. Yeah. It's like. Evaluate is not always there, but it's, it's been a passionate group of people, and, Absolutely. and, and it's really exciting to see um, you guys. Obviously, your leader in networking. Thanks for coming on the cube. We really appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Uh, great to see you guys here, and thanks for your time. Nice to meet you, Jacob. Great. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thank you. All right. Thanks.